Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. We welcome you both online and in-house. And we're glad to be here, aren't we? Glad to be in worship this morning. Um, Have a few announcements. First of all, um, we have, uh, that's my prayer list, Um, treat bags for River Oaks. I want to thank everybody for delivering those. And and we had a warm welcome, and everybody was very thankful for the for the treat bags at, at River Oaks. Um, we have Thanksgiving baskets for Good Samaritan, and that's in the bulletin. You can read that, a reminder of that. And Charge Conference is November the 21st at 3 p.m. if you'd like to attend. And it's going to be here at Trinity, and the other churches are going to join us here. We're going to be the host church. Uh, we're having a Halloween photo booth tonight, so please remember remember that. The children, we just wanted to do a booth so that the children can, parents can take pictures of the children, and or they can take them themselves. A lot of, a lot of kids have phones nowadays, so they can take their own. And uh, Warren, I mean, Walter wanted me to remind you that there is a cleanup Friday at 10 o'clock. We're going to do some yard work, so if you can make it for that, we need your help. And if you can come and help with that, we'd appreciate it. And also, we have coats for CARM coming up. If you want to bring any coats that you have that you want to give away, just bring them here and put them down in the uh, children's Sunday school area in the room with the red door, uh, if that helps. Uh, And we'll get those to to CARM. So thank you for your donations to that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. UMW tomorrow at 10 o'clock, right? 10.30. 10.30. 1030 UMW. So please remember UMW. Anything else? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Lord, let this be. Show us how. Love your neighbor as yourself. Lord, let this be. Take us where you surely need us to go. Let love be the lens that lets us see, the power that enlivens our lives, light that points to the path, and the very grace that saved us. Lord, fill us with your love. Amen. Good morning. If you're going to start a religious revolution, you better have some good music. So Martin Luther made sure that he did by writing the hymns himself. Over 500 years ago, 110, a mighty fortress is our God. 110. Please stand.
remain standing for our affirmation of faith, and that is found in your bulletin, I mean in your hymnal on page 888, the World Methodist Social Affirmation. Eight eighty six. Eight eighty six. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Eight eighty six. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't read numbers this morning. We believe in God, Creator of the world and all people, and in Jesus Christ incarnate among us, who died and rose again, and in the Holy Spirit, present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We believe God help our unbelief. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom in the upholding, upholding of human dignity and community, in every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation, in each act of self-giving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gift entrusted to us that all may have enough, in all responsible use of the earth's resources. Glory, Glory to God on high and, and on earth, peace. peace. We confess our sin, individual and collective, by silence or action, through the violation of human dignity, based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith, through the exploitation of people because of greed and indifference, through the misuse of power in personal, communal, national, and international life, through the search for security by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence, through the abuse of technology which endangers the earth and all life in it. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We can commit ourselves individually and as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come. Amen. <laughs> pray together. Gracious and holy God, we have no idea where we're going sometimes. We don't even see the road ahead of us. And we don't even know for certain when it will end or how it will end. But Lord, we know you're with us. We know that you sustain us and carry us even when we can't walk ourselves. Lord, help us to see the journey that you have for us and Help us to see which way we're supposed to go as a church. What do you have in store for us here at Trinity? Speak to us, Lord, and help us to pray for the answer to that question. Help us to be serious about praying for that. Because without your direction, we're sure to fumble and stumble and fall. Lord, we just thank you for all of those here today. And those who are home sick, we pray for your healing your grace, your mercy in their lives. Lord, we pray for our foolishness that you would give us wisdom. Lord, we pray that you would help us to learn to love one another. To love one another, to love God and love one another are the two greatest commandments. Lord, help us to take those very seriously because without those two, we can do nothing. Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for Jesus Christ 
And we pray that you would help, help us to learn to live into your kingdom and to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May our ushers come forward for God's tithes and our offerings. God, we thank you for these gifts of love. Lord, let, let the love
love of our hearts be a melody that sings louder than anything around us. And Lord, we just praise you for the gifts of Jesus Christ that you gave us in Christ's name. The anthem this morning is found on page 171 of the Methodist hymnal. It's a, a gospel music song that two of the greats in gospel music uh, wrote in 1970. Bill Gaither, Gloria Gaither wrote this song, uh, and I hope you enjoy it. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain Jesus 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms will all pass away but there's something about that name Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain Jesus 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms will all pass away but there's something about that name Today's reading is from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 12, the New Testament section, page 48, the First Commandment. One of the scribes came up and heard the Sadducees disputing with one another, and seeing that Jesus answered them well, asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is the one, that there is no one but he, and to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any question. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray together. Gracious and holy God, we pray that you would empower us to be the people that you call us to be. Empower us to love, love you first, above and beyond all others, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. In Christ's name, amen. Have you ever needed to get anything cleaned at the dry cleaners and you look around and you find a 24-hour dry cleaner, it's the last minute and you need to have something done? And you go in and you're, you're thinking, you have a sigh of relief thinking that you can get this garment cleaned in time for this event and you, you ask them, and, and you go to a 24-hour cleaner and you ask them if you can get it tomorrow. No, that's just our name. That's not what we actually do. We can get it to you next Thursday, but not tomorrow. Just feel like the whole wind is just shot out from under you. Because you really needed that. But then, isn't that the way we are sometimes as Christians? We're, in Christ we're Christians and disciples by name only. We don't love God like God asks us to. We don't love our neighbors like God asks us to. We're too busy. We're too, we're too involved in our own lives and we forget what we're called to do. You know, Jesus said to the Sad Sadducee that was earlier in the chapter that was trying to bring Jesus to his knees, trying to crucify Jesus, actually. He said to him, you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. We think we know about love, but we take vengeance and bear grudges against our neighbors. We have divided loyalties in this world. We're not ready to follow God and put God our first priority, much less our neighbor. Sometimes it feels like we're just going through the motions. This story is a conflict story about the meaning and the reality of the kingdom of God. The religious leaders in Jesus' day are debating with Jesus. But there's one scribe, one scribe who is sincere. His questions arise for a deep sense of respect for Jesus. And he asks, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus simply says, love the Lord your God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. You shall love the na your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And he didn't say commandments. He said commandment. One. The scribe uh, the scribe is a rare religious leader in Mark's gospel because Mark is always talking about how they're against Jesus. But this guy is sincere. And he says to him, you're right, teacher. This is much more important than the burnt offerings and sacrifices. This scribe publicly affirms Jesus' teaching. Plus, he, he has put himself at risk 
because he undercuts the temple's sacrificial system. But he knows that love is the ground of all the commandments. Jesus saw that the scribe had answered wisely and he said, for, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Out of the love commandment and out of the commandments that the Jewish people had, 613 commandments, love of God and love of neighbor is number one. And the ten commandments that we follow, love of God and love of neighbor, is number one. Without love, we can't follow any of the commandments. The love is what the commandments stand on. Think about it. We can't follow any of them if we don't love. Not that the, the other ones don't count. They're just as important as they were from the very beginning. But, they, but we have to love to be able to follow the commandments. I read in homiletics this week, to transfer the Hebrew, Hebrew Torah as simply law is misleading. Because the English language, we think of, of the law mainly as a restrictive function. Our laws are usually agreed upon, an agreed upon list of do's and don'ts, and not any more than that. The meaning of the Torah is far richer. Rabbinical stu studies are encouraged, or students are encouraged not just to memorize the law, but to meditate on it, to internalize it, and to know it in your heart. Psalm 1 tells us, it promises actually, that when we follow the law, we will be like trees planted by the rivers of water. In the Jewish understanding, God's law nourishes the soul. God's law is life. How different is it from a legal system? Especially the bar exams. You think about the bar exams. When somebody passes the bar exams, their, their knowledge is right here. But it has to be right here, too. Because they have to be, they don't have, if we're, if we're blind to values, our knowledge doesn't do us much good, does it? There is no guarantee that attorneys with a near-perfect score on their bar exams will not defraud their clients. Studying, studying Torah, the lifelong occupation of the scribe who questions Jesus, is very different. It's all about learning God's way of doing things. This is why the scribe doesn't consider it a stretch for Jesus to answer his question about the most important law by taking, talking about the love commandment. You know, God's law is not a cage. It's there to set us free. It's there to give us life. It's there to give us power. Because without God's power, we can do nothing. There's a video that is done by, um, and I've asked the leadership to read this book, a, a book, and there's a video in that book. Um, it's a Saturn commercial, and it won an award. And it has the guy backing out of his driveway, just walking. He's literally backing out of the driveway, walking. And he goes down the street, and he, and he goes, stops at a red light, he turns, and he, and, he, and he actually gets pulled over by the police, and he's still walking. Police is walking. He stops and picks up children along the way. He's, he's driving a bus to school. He's, he's doing all these things. He's... he's Walking the whole time. The whole point of the commercial is to see the people. The people is what this is about. It's not about sheet metal. It's not about Saturn. It's about people. 
Even the commercial is a Saturn commercial. It's about the people. Do we see the people around us through the eyes of love? Do we realize that there are people right here in our midst, in, in our midst, in our neighborhoods? You know, I should be ashamed of myself. I don't even know my neighbor's names. But isn't that our culture? We hold up in our homes and we don't even, we don't even know the people that live around us. It has taken us years to fall into this way of life and it's going to take us forever to get out of it. There are people that are hurting. There's people that are, that are dying. There's people that don't know Jesus that need Jesus so badly. And we sit here and we don't meet our neighbors. How sad is that? How sad is that? Gail informed me this week that we got a call from someone in the newspaper and he wanted me, he wanted to interview me about what are we doing about our drop in church numbers because of COVID-19. I told her if he called back to tell him I'm not interested in answering that question. Because it's not about numbers. It's about making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. You know, if we do what God calls us to do, if we love God and put God first in our lives, and we love our neighbor, then we won't have to worry about numbers. I guarantee you, if we have the passion that we need to have about our church, and our, not just our church, but our people around us, if we do something more than if somebody asks us about our church, we talk about our programs, and we talk about Jesus and what Jesus has actually done in our lives. We're ashamed to say that nowadays. We're ashamed to share the gospel. We're embarrassed. But that's the way that we're going to grow. It's for us to share God's love for us in a genuine way. Not, not preachy, not, not mean, not, not hateful, not judgmental. But to really share what God has done in our lives. The transformation that has taken place, the love that we've seen, the experiences that we've had, and the, and the way that God has transformed us. You know, I've visited you all, not everybody yet, I'm still working on it, but I have visited a great deal of you. And everywhere I've went, I've heard these words. We used to have such and such. We used to do such and such. Why are you not still doing it? You can. It's there. God's promises are here for us. You know, I used to be five foot six and a half and weighed 118 pounds and could run like the wind. But that's not doing me a bit of good right now. <laughs> I sit down on the floor and I can't even get up by myself without Alan giving me a hand to pull myself up. But that's not an excuse for me to stop doing things that God has called me to do. We have to see the people around us and be genuine. Discipleship is not about numbers. It's about growing deeper in love with God and our neighbors. I wish we'd just stop talking about numbers and start living the gospel. Live it. 
Our problem is not a lack of people. Our problem is that we can't see the people around us. We can't reach out with love. We encounter people every day in our lives. But we're embarrassed to share the gospel. We're embarrassed to tell our faith stories to each other. And when we do reach out, we, do, we reach out to do ministry for somebody. Not with others, but for others. It's okay to, do, to help others. But when we have a relationship with that person, then we learn from them. I have never been on a mission trip that I didn't gain more than I, than I brought. Never in my life. I've never done anything in ministry where I didn't gain more than I brought. Because you all teach me more than I can ever imagine. And I'm so grateful for that. Sometimes I learn the hard way. (laughs) You know what sin is? Sin is the failure to love. Love has been distorted, denied, disordered by us as individuals and on a systemic level. Jesus came to open the way of love. Jesus is calling us. Jesus is calling the religious leaders of his day, beckoning them toward love of God and love of people. They had all the laws. They knew what they were. They had them right here. But they didn't have them right here. We have to know the why of what we do before we know how to do it. Jesus even says that we have to love our neighbor, our enemies. And that's hard. I don't know about you, but I have a hard time with that. But that's what Jesus calls us to do. Jesus calls us to humility, to kindness, to integrity, to forgiveness, and for selflessness. Jesus calls us to care for the hungry, the thirsty, the naked, the sick, the imprisoned, and the immigrant. Jesus went out and met those people that were around him on the city streets, in the countryside, by the rivers, by the streams, in places that most of us probably wouldn't even have gone. even with the lepers. He didn't expect them to come to him. We're so spoiled in the church. We, we expect people to come with that, to us without making any effort for them to come. We barely even talk about our faith except on Sunday mornings or in church. Jesus had compassion for the people and opened the way to true relationships with them. Mark's gospel reminds us that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Today, right now, in Jesus Christ. And we are to live that kingdom every day of our lives. This means treating others as we wish to be treated. This means our allegiance to God comes first and foremost. We have a passionate, radical Savior who came and walked among us to show us God's love. God is love, the Bible tells us. God is love. The way to Jesus is not a technique. It's not a map. It's not a dogma or belief. It's not a philosophy. 
Love is a way of being in the world. Getting closer to the heart of God, when love becomes flesh, life is created. When love goes to work, life is healed. Henry Nouwen says, following Jesus is moving away from our fear and toward love. Love is a relationship with God and our neighbors. We can't love if we don't have a relationship. Jesus didn't go to the synagogue to share the good news very often. He did, but not as often as he shared it on the streets. Jesus said, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Love is evidence of God's in our lives. It took us decades to get into this mess as a church and as a culture, and it won't be easy to get out of it. And I can guarantee you that I can't get you out of it by myself. Moses didn't do that. And I sure know that I can't. Jesus didn't do it. And I sure know that I can't. That's something we have to do together as a body of Christ. Gina Stopson says, With significant, when significant people in your life pull away from you, do you send a greeting card or do you visit a person? Do you create a PowerPoint slide presentation with charts and graphs that make the case for not pulling away, or do you hug them and find ways to stay connected? We need to immerse ourselves in the lives of people who are right outside our doors. He says people are not products, profits, or goals. We are people in need of love. We first have to see the people. We have to be real with the people. We have to share from our hearts, not from our heads. Because that's what Jesus calls us to do. Jesus says, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. These words are easy to read, but they're, it takes a lifetime to live them. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is 467. Trust and obey. We are going to sing verses 1 and 4 of 467. Please stand.
benediction, God is love, let us continue the legacy of love that God began. Jesus proclaimed it and practiced it. In the name of the one whose love created us, redeems us, and sustains us. Amen.